Yeah, so the background for this study is that there are thousands and millions of patients around the world getting coronary intervention with drug-eluting stents. And part of the treatment of drug for drug-eluting stents is dual antiplatelet therapy, and the risks of dual antiplatelet therapy are bleeding. So to try and minimize the duration of dual antiplatelet therapy results in another risk, which is potentially an increase in ischemic events. So the background for this trial was to see if just three months of dual antiplatelet therapy is non-inferior to 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy with respect to major adverse cardiovascular events. The unique aspect of this trial, though, is that at that three-month point, what they did was they actually randomized patients to drop aspirin not the P2Y12 inhibitor. Now this is a very interesting strategy because we have always thought of aspirin as the stalwart, the fundamental base of treatment for patients with coronary disease. So in this particular study, what they did was they randomized 3,000 patients to have three months of dual antiplatelet therapy after which they dropped the aspirin versus 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy. Now when you look at these kinds of strategies, it's really important to think about what the sample sizes and what the event rates are. And the reason for that is that the kinds of stents that we have now are incredibly safe. So the event rates tend to be a little bit low. So you have to be adequately powered to actually show non-inferiority, which is challenging. Um, the, the trial then looked, assumed an event rate of about 4% in the control arm, the prolonged early antiplatelet therapy arm, uh, and they aimed for an absolute margin the non-inferiority margin of 1.8%, that gave them about 80% power at a p-value of 0.05 with 3,000 patients. So they did, in fact, randomize about 3,000 patients. And you know this is sort of a standard PCI trial, about 38% to 40% diabetics, uh, very evenly distributed with respect to three different types of drug-eluting stents, which is important because different types of drug-eluting stents are being used in clinical practice. Um, and the results were interesting because it turns out that the event rate was lower than what they expected. It was somewhere between 25 and 3%. And the non-inferiority criterion was met at a p-value that was very significant, suggesting that the shorter duration of dual antiplatelet therapy was non-inferior with respect to prolonged dual antiplatelet therapy for major adverse cardiovascular events. When they looked at safety, and they used the BARC criteria for bleeding, which has now become the standard criterion for assessing bleeding in randomized clinical trials, they found that, in fact, there was a statistically significant lower rate of BARC 2 through 5 bleeding with the shorter duration therapy. Now, there are some limitations to this trial, the first of which is something that I've already mentioned, which is that the event rate was lower than they expected. The second issue is that it turns out that between 9 and 14 percent of the patients who were randomized to the three months of dual antiplatelet therapy actually continued on aspirin even after the three months. So there was a little less fidelity to that randomized treatment arm than one would really hope for in a randomized trial like this. But in any case, the conclusions of the study were that three months of dual antiplatelet therapy is non-inferior to 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy and is safer. I think the clinical implications are a little bit more nuanced than that, quite frankly, because this is, cannot be taken as a definitive trial because of the limitations that I mentioned. What it does tell us is that probably in some selected patients, it's probably safe to use shorter durations of dual antiplatelet therapy. There are other trials that are ongoing. I think the next steps really are to do a larger definitive study or at the very least pool the trials together that have looked at short versus longer dual antiplatelet therapy. And in particular, focus on those trials that have dropped aspirin, not the P2Y12 inhibitor. In addition, there continues to be evolution in stent design. So this kind of issue is gonna to have to be revisited as newer stent platforms come forward, particularly those that are potentially safer than what we have now.